Doesn't this look so weird that for the first time Tommy Egan was standing in front of Ghost Tombstone and yet did not move a muscle of emotions? The feeling was as if, fuck that, Ghost ain't the one in there. The writer decided to draw everybody's attention straight to Diana driving in with Drew and then flip attention back to the conversation and everything look as if they are continuing whatever they are doing at that moment and Tommy had to leave without even looking at the tombstone of ghosts. This for me is something that I am questioning myself about. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Nino, the only guy who still insists ghosts might be alive. I'm back again with another review of Power Book 2 Ghosts episode 10 the grand finale i believe if you've been watching my reviews and you watched the last one i did on episode 9 to 10 i made some predictions that came to pass about the fact that tasha is going to walk free and Tarek is going to walk free sax is going down and the fact that tommy is probably coming back and it all happened now, in this theory, I'm going to highlight on a lot of things that has gone down, starting from Stephen Ott. If you've been following me, you remember that I always talk about this guy, that Stephen Ott is not someone you should trust. Look at how he controlled the judge. Look at the way Tasha's case was easily dismissed. The fact that if Tasha and Tariq keeps quiet about whatever happened in court, they will walk free. How easy is this? How simple can this be? This tells me that the same way Ghost was hidden and covered up. That again, that brings my attention to the statement Tariq made at the cemetery that ghosts never dies. Now, this is not the first time they are using this phrase. I remember one of the episodes in power, the title was Ghost Never Dies. This statement is something I believe they are building upon gradually to surprise us one day with the fact that ghost wasn't really dead. And as an advocate, until I see an RIP post of Ghost, trust me, I'm not going to believe that Ghost is dead because recently they've released an RIP for Ramirez. What in this world stopped them from releasing the RIP of Ghost if Ghost is really dead? Because Ghost has been a lead character from day one. So if Ramirez is honored with an RIP post and yet ghost is still not honored with an r.i.p post then it can only mean one thing that ghost wasn't really dead hence this new statement from Tariq: ghosts never dies so i believe if you are having that little space of the possibility of ghost surviving trust me you need to keep that small faith because one day i am sure ghost is going to pop out somehow now I believe Tommy's intro was very dope with the many, men, many, 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 men. Trust me, the way I reacted at that moment, I believe a lot of people found themselves in that mood. Some of us jump up and down screaming, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Not because we saw Tommy, just because we saw the car and the heat he put on on Tasha and Monet at the bar alone gives a very exciting mood that trust me if you are power fans i believe that moment for you was like now this is power but anyways in spite of the excitement i believe cash appearance means tommy would do anything to write lakeisha's death this also shows that tommy is really really hurt about lakeisha's death and still cares for cash i think this move for checking up on cash was a great move from tommy so still on tommy this is the interesting part. He says, you're trying to pin ghost murder on me when we both know who did that. Now, this is the secret Tariq still haven't told Tasha yet. Like I was saying in my previous reviews that if Tasha were to know that Tommy was her throat that night and saw Tariq shot his father, Tasha wouldn't have ratted on Tommy and she wouldn't have taken the deal that got her off jail. Tasha might be free now, but I believe Lakeisha's death will put her back in jail. Hence, what the guard that was escorting Tasha off was saying, see you soon, see you soon, is a key statement she's trying to make. And I believe if Tasha has to go back there, then it's going to be Lakeisha's murder. Now, about the pool drowning case, the fact that Jabari is dead, I don't think that issue will come 
to an end anytime soon because provided there were cameras at the entrance of the game and they decide to check the footages of those cameras i believe they will find Tariq running and someone chasing him if this happens then i'm sure Tariq will be in a lot of trouble or he has a lot of questions to answer because the motion they were both in would never suggest that they were just walking quickly or hurrying up for something if the camera managed to get Tariq and the guy who was drowned by two beats, then Tariq is going to have a lot of questions to answer about that particular case. So, in spite of the fact that Jabari is dead, doesn't establish the fact that that issue is also dead. Now, Jabari exposing himself to Tariq was the beginning of his end. I said it once in my review that Jabari is going to catch a bullet from Tariq. I said it that... Tariq is going to kill this guy because of how he has started tracking Tariq, started suspecting him of things. I knew very well that this guy was going to die and I knew very well that it was going to be Tariq who would end this guy. And it sure happened. It feels a little bit off, but trust me, it was the best thing Tariq could do because now he has gotten Kane's trust back. So if Tariq and Kane will ever have any common ground, then trust me, this is the beginning of their common ground because Tariq has justified himself that he's not after the Tahadis and he's not going to do anything to harm them. So Tariq finishing Jabari is one thing that he can use to convince Kane that Kane, I'm with you anytime, any day. Davis McLean, on the other hand, is employing Sachs and I believe this move is to replace Paula, who has given up on him and his firm for lying to her. Now, question is, is Sachs the right option for Davis? If I have to ask a follow-up question, what exactly is Davis looking for? Because he knows Sachs was the former attorney and he believes that Sachs can get him certain files. Is that the reason why he's employing Sachs? And we all know Sachs. He just accepts anything that comes his way, not even knowing whether it's good or bad, until it gets to the climax of it, then he realizes that, damn, I fucked up. So, Sachs, as we all know, has accepted the offer and is going to work with Davis Macklin. We all cross our fingers and wait and see how these two people work together, whether it will work or not. We are yet to see. And finally, Kane is becoming like Sachs in the Tahadas family, whereby every move he makes has a little piece that can be traced back to him. He's keeping Ramirez's gun and badge. Question is, what for? Why didn't he dispose of the gun as well? Now, this is the kind of things Kane also does. He does things and at the end of the day, it comes back to hunt him and he keeps doing so if you compare Kane and Sachs it's like even though Kane is like from the street he basically doesn't even think if he's coming to do something when he finishes what he's doing then he realizes that what I've done was a mess why am I comparing Kane with Sachs in this scenario if you look at how Tariq blackmailed Sachs with the fact that he saw him at Truth from the beginning of Power Book 2 Ghost and how he was trying to make Sachs his puppet, you realize that it's the same thing Tariq is doing to Kane. At every point where Tariq and Kane meet, he cools Kane down even though Kane had no reason to even listen to Tariq. The first time Tariq has to calm Kane down was when Kane was going to drop him off on campus and then told Tariq not to tell anybody about his family or anything that happens in their family. And he, Tariq, was telling Kane that, hey, I'm not going to go against you and your family, but your uncle was a snitch. That's why he came out so quickly. There you see a reflection on Kane's face that all this while he didn't even understand what was going on until Tariq mentioned it. Now, secondly, when he shot Jabari in this current episode, look at the conversation. Look at how Tariq handled Kane. Look at how Kane gave up the gun to Tariq. Look at how he used just the conversation to turn his mind away from the hate he, Kane, had for Tariq before coming up there. So this should tell you that Kane has the same characteristics as Sachs, only that the two of them belong to different group. So guys, this is how Power Book 2 Ghost Season 1 has come to an end. And I still want to talk about the fact that it is not normal for Tommy to see ghost grave and doesn't show any emotion or doesn't even have a moment, like just a moment to feel like, wow, so this is how ghost has ended. There was nothing, but then 
the writer quickly brought in Diana and Drew just to divert attention from anybody seeing Tommy's reaction when Tariq was drawing his attention to Ghost Tombstone. Because trust me, believe me or not, it is natural for Tommy to have just have, even if Tommy hasn't even done anything under the circumstances because there was a gun to his head. At least the realization that where you are standing is Ghost Tombstone or is Ghost Grave should at least give a very reflective moment at that point before we continue the conversation about whatever that was going on at the cemetery but i believe strongly that the writer was very smart that people like us would detect all those kind of things and say no why would tommy be behaving this way why would tommy feel like he doesn't even care about the tombstone he was standing in front of so they quickly brought diana and drew just to mix up things for nobody to even realize that Tommy didn't even care about the tombstone he was standing in front of. So guys, this is how I'm wrapping up the season of Power Book 2 Ghosts. If you like this video, kindly leave your comment, subscribe, hit the like button. Until then, I'll be coming up with another episode shortly. Thank you for watching.